Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let me welcome you to attend our online service. Always walk with the Lord. There are wonderful blessings when we walk with the Lord. Genesis chapter 5, verse 24 tells us that Enoch walked with God and God took him away. Enoch did have to suffer physical death. How blessed Enoch was. God will bless those who walk with him. He has his own ways to bless. And God will also use those who walk with him to bless others. When we walk with God, we bear abundant and sweet fruits. We'll be able to give love and wisdom to people. And we will be channel of God's power to those who are in need. Now, let like us to say the opening prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for saving us. Thank you that we are no longer slaves of sin, but slaves of righteousness. Help us to yield the members of our bodies to be instruments of righteousness, which leads to eternal life. Fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we will follow his desires and not the desires of our flesh. Lord, we are weak, but you are strong. Deliver us from evil and temptations. Keep on cleansing and purifying our lives so that we can be Christ-like. Help us to be amb your ambassadors of love and peace. May we be able to spread the fragrance of Jesus wherever we are. Our lives are yours. You stand for your glory and purpose. We pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we will ask the worship team to lead us to sing two songs to praise the Lord. Oh, let's come to in the prayer song. Hear our prayer. Coming to you 
The topic of my sharing is Fallen but Restored for God. My sharing is taken from Isaiah. My sharing is mainly taken from chapter 40 to chapter 66. As I read these 26 chapters, I am amazed to see how good our God is. He is a rebuilder, a restorer and a turnaround expert. The Jews due to their sinfulness were down to zero or less than zero, but God rebuilt them and met them hundred plus. Since God could do it to them, He could do it to you and to me. When we are hurt by our sins, or when we are trapped in a hopeless situation, God can come to our rescue. He can turn us around and make us strong again. I have to give you the background so that you can understand what I'm talking about. Isaiah was a prophet who lived about 700 years before the birth of Jesus. Isaiah warned the people about their sinfulness. During his time, the country's morals was spiraling downwards. There was widespread idolatry, sexual immorality, corruption, slavery, injustice, breaking of Sabbath, etc. Isaiah warned them of punishment by God. They would be attacked by the Babylonians and the survivors sank into exile. Isaiah also prophesied hope. He said that God would restore them. He gave them many promises of God to restore them. God would bring them back to rebuild Jerusalem, the temple and their homes. Isaiah's warnings came to pass. The Babylonians conquered Jerusalem in the year 586 BC. The survivors went into exile. Jerusalem with its houses and temple were burned to the ground. Over time, it was covered by butchers. The peers or immediate listeners of Isaiah dismissed his words as wind or noise. But for the exiles who were suffering discouragement, the promises of God to restore them were very, very comforting. Today, we're going to look at God's promises to restore broken people or people who have broken hopes. Let me begin by talking about their sins. Some of the exiles thought that the exile was due to the fact that God was not strong enough to protect them. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 1 or to which all my creditors did I sell you? Because of your sins, you were sold. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 2, Was my arm too short to deliver you? Do I lack the strength to rescue you? By the mere rebuke, I dry up the sea. I turn rivers into a desert. God told the exiles, You are in exile, not because I can't protect you. It's not because I owe a king some money, that I was forced to contra my debt with you. You think I am powerless? Don't you remember that I could even open the Red Sea for your ancestors to escape the Egyptian army? Your exile is due to my punishment for your sins. Are you suffering some hardships? Perhaps some people are treating you very unkindly or unfairly. You wonder why this is happening to you. Why doesn't God stop it? When we suffer hardships, we tend to focus on the unkind deeds of others to us. Why don't we focus on ourselves? Maybe our hardships and sufferings are due to our sins. Maybe God is using them to punish us for certain bad attitudes or behavior. Maybe we become proud but we are not aware of it. The right response to God's punishment is to be humble and contrite. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15 For this is what the High and Exalted One says, He who lives forever, whose name is holy, I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. 
To be contrite means to be remorseful or to feel regret for your sins. Now don't try to justify yourself. Don't try to blame others. Just tell God that you are truly sorry for your moral failures. God has two homes. The first one is in heaven. The second one is with those who are humble and contrite. Isn't it strange? When most people are avoiding you or refuse to be associated with you, God is there with you. You are in his second home. The Jews lost their confidence before or during the exile. They saw themselves as very small or weak. Look at this verse. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 14. Do not be afraid, you warm Jacob, little Israel. Do not fear, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. From God's conversation with them, we can understand their thinking or their mentality. The Jews consider themselves little or saw themselves as worms. Worms are so weak and can be easily stepped on. How did they acquire this infinity complex? From before and during the exile. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 11 to 12 All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who wage war against you will be as nothing at all. Jerusalem was surrounded for two years before it was conquered. For two years, they heard almost every day war cries and sounds of battering rams, rams against the walls. And because of the two-year siege, they ran out of food. Many died of famine. Some survivors were, were reduced to cannibalism. Parents were forced to eat their babies. Can you imagine their agony? After they were conquered, they were looted and plundered. They lost all their valuables. They were derided and insulted. The Babylonian soldiers insulted them. You say your God is the greatest? Why is he protecting you? Where is he? The captors even asked them to lie on the ground so that they could walk over their backs. The captors set fire to their homes, the palace, the temple, and the whole city. Then they were chained and brought into exile. It was really humiliating. God tried to lift or boost their confidence. God said that He would make them super strong. Isaiah 41 verse 15, See, I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them, and reduce the hills to chaff. A threshing sledge is the farming equipment that Jewish farmers use. It consists of a frame holding two timber rollers with sharp stones or metal driven into them. They are dragged by the ox over a pile of harvested grain until the kernels are separated from the husk. God said that he would make them into a huge or gigantic threshing sledge. That means God will make them super strong or super big. Have you ever been abused, humiliated, insulted, or dismissed? Perhaps your lecturer has thrown your assignment papers back at you. Perhaps your boss has insulted you in front of other colleagues, or he always magnifies your mistakes. Perhaps your teacher has called you stupid. These actions can be very hurting and cause us to lose self-confidence. Well, you are not alone in this. Joseph was also rejected or humiliated by his brothers, but he became greater than them. David was rejected by King Saul, but he became the strongest and best king of Israel. It doesn't matter what people say about you. It's what God says 
about you that matters. It doesn't matter what people do to you. What matters is what God can do to you. Joseph, David, didn't become great by their abilities. The situations were against them. For example, Joseph was sold, falsely accused by his boss wife and thrown into prison. David was on the run for several years. Several times he was close to be captured by Saul's soldiers. They couldn't rise up by their abilities. They rose up by the help of God. God can bless you, bless you double. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. God can, make, can give you promotion twice. He can make your business volume grow two times. He can help you to win competitions twice as often. He can help you to double your marks. During the exile, the Jews felt abandoned or forgotten by God. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 14, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. The Jews had always harbored the dream to go back to rebuild their homeland. But as the years progressed, there was no sign that they could go back. The Babylonian government was as strong as ever. The Babylonians were very fierce and warlike. There was no way they could stash a, stash a revolt to return. Their weight turned into years, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But there was still no sign to show that they could go back. Many of them became discouraged and gave up hope of ever returning. They felt that God had forgotten about them, but God had not forgotten them. God assured them that He would not forget them. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Do you think a nursing mother will get so engrossed with her housework until she forgets to nurse her baby? Will she just stay away when a baby is crying for milk? No, she won't forget. Her baby is always in her thoughts. Likewise, God will never forget you. You are always in his, thought, in his thoughts. He knows your cries and He will come to help you. Your friends or colleagues may have forgotten you or written you off. Hardly anyone call you anymore. They say that you are an expired product. They see it as a waste of time to associate with someone who has no more future, no more potential. But God will not. He will come to you to restore you. The Jews found it hard to believe that God could save them. So God reminded them of His great power. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 12, Who has measured the waters in the hole of His hand? or with the breath of his hand, mark off the heavens, who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weigh the mountains on the scales, and the hills in a balance. God told them that he is strong and can help them. Some of the Jews had very fixed or narrow ideas of how God would work. They thought if God were to save them, he would have to perform a second exodus. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 16 to 18. This is what the Lord says. He will make a way to the sea, a path to the mighty waters who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together. And they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Some of them thought that God would send 
them a deliverer like Moses who had miraculous powers. But God used a new and unexpected way. He used a non-believer to restore them. God raised a new ruler called Cyrus to overthrow the Babylonians. God called Cyrus his shepherd. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 28, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and will accomplish all that I please. He will say of Jerusalem, let it be rebuilt and of the temple, let, let its foundation be laid. Cyrus conquered Babylon and asked the Jews to return home to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. Now to the Jews, this was not acceptable. How could God use a pagan king to do his holy work? But God replied that they had no right to question him, to question his methods. This is God's reply to the Jews. Isaiah 45 verse 9, Woe to those who quarrel with their maker, those who are nothing but portions among the portions on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Does your work say the potter has no hands? The clay had no right to question the potter. Why do you make us into a cup and not a plate? Similarly, the Jews had no right to question God's choice or methods to restore them. Some of us fall into the mistake of thinking that God couldn't help us. We say our situation is too difficult. Some fall into the mistake of thinking God can only work in certain ways. By using our mind, we limit God's power. We hurt our faith. God can use any person or any way to restore us. God had even used animals to help his people. He sent the ravens to feed Elijah. He used the donkey to speak to Balaam. Jesus had money to pay the temple tax, but he sent Peter to catch a fish, which had a large silver coin in it to pay the temple tax. So don't put God in a box. God is bigger and greater than our imagination. He can do more than we dare to ask and imagine. God's intention was not just to restore the Jews, but to make them extremely great. Historically, the Jews returned to Israel to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. God promised to build them a beautiful city. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 11 to 12, A flitted city, lashed by storms and not comforted. I will rebuild you with stones or turquoise, your foundations with sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. Of course, this is talking about the new Jerusalem from heaven. But the fact is that God has better or grand things for us. And God will make Jerusalem the worship center of the earth. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11, Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night, so that people may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. Kings and different nations will come to Jerusalem to make sacrifices to God. Why does God want to restore the Jews? Was it for their sake or for his sake? It was not for their sake. It was for his sake, for his name's sake, for his purpose. God wanted the Jews to return so that they could rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. He wanted his people to live holy lives. He wanted his people to be a showroom to capture the attention of the world. He wanted his people to preach his word and law to the nations. He wanted many nations to come to Jerusalem to worship him. So for you and me, our restoration is not so much for ourselves, but for God. God wants to make you great again so that you can serve his grand purpose. His grand purpose is to bring in his everlasting kingdom. He wants to save the non-believers before Christ returns. 
He wants to build a big and strong church to be able to evangelize the world. So there are many tasks and he's recruiting. He's asking his people to join in his big project. He's recruiting people to do his work. Will you respond? Are you willing to link your agenda with his agenda? Are you willing to adjust your agenda to fit his agenda? When we serve God, he will bless us. He will reward us for every service. Jesus said, if a person were to give a cup of water to a little child, he will not lose his reward. Even such a small service like giving water to a small child doesn't escape his attention and will not fail to get a reward from him. God is a great tipper. He tips you for everything you do for him. He will never accept any FOC service from you. you will always, he will always reward you. Because of your sins, you might have suffered financial or other losses. But the Lord will bring you reward and compensation. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 10, see, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. God doesn't want to leave his work in, incomplete. He has started a work in you and he wants to complete it. He knew you and chose you before you were born. He formed you in your mother's womb. At the right time, he made known to you his gospel. He sent someone to explain to you. You heard and believed. You grew spiritually and were doing well. But then you fell into sin. His work in you stopped because of your fall. But he wants to resume his good work in you. Will you come back and let him continue the good work? Let him finish the good work. I will just end here by sharing a testimony of a Christian businessman. I met him many years ago. When he was a teenager, he mixed with bad friends. He started to take and then sell drugs. He was arrested and sentenced to imprisonment for many years. He was very touched by the Christian warden who showed him a lot of care and concern. He would ask how he was. He decided that since this warden was so caring, he better believe everything he said about God. He then received Christ in the prison. He felt very small. He was filled with deep sorrow about his past deeds. He felt that he had let his parents down. He felt useless as he couldn't read or write and was without knowledge and any skill. Later, Sun Imes taught him how to read and write. After his release, he visited a church. The pastor's wife was very stressed by his visit. She asked, why did God bring this kind of people to our church? Later, he met a former inmate who had become a businessman. He recommended him the job of a clerk in the factory. Soon, trouble occurred. He was given unpause for purchases. He took the packet but returned the money. They said that he was very silly. His actions created problems for the company. Then he was asked to resign. He felt very sad and discouraged. He tendered his resignation, but to his surprise, he was asked to serve, but in a different capacity. His new job was to run the canteen and to supply uniforms to the workers in the factory. Later on, he supplied uniforms to other factories. He also operated canteens in other factories too. He ended up earning 15,000 to 18,000 ringgit per month. One night, he had a dream. He saw a cross with the blood of Jesus dripping onto the earth. He flowed into all the streams and later into the rivers which discharged into the sea. He felt that God wanted the gospel about Jesus to be preached to the whole world. But how? Earning 15,000 to 18,000 ringgit was not enough. God asked, do you believe? He thought of going to full time, 
But how many could he save? But if he could send 10 pastors, it would be more effective. Then he was asked to take up all the shop lots in a new industrial area where several factories were being built. But he did not have the faith. He had failed to take up only one unit. He opened a convenience store. The monthly profit was about 15,000 ringgit. Look up to God. God wants to restore you to work for Him. He wants to do great things. And when you work with Him, you will become significant. Gawai is coming soon. We must not forget to pray for our dire friends. We are sons and daughters of God. As children of God, we don't just want the blessings. We also have responsibilities, such as to give and to pray. God loves the dire people. He wants to have a big number of dire people live in His eternal kingdom. We must pray for them. So I urge you to join us for a weekly Wednesday prayer meeting from 8 to 9 p.m. to pray for the dire people and other non-believers as well and also the needs of believers. Let me remind you of a vision they received before. Be watchful and prayerful. Some of you have come with various problems. Do not be discouraged. I, your God, have heard your prayers. Look to me and put your trust in me. My eyes are watching you. Do not be afraid. Seek my face. Take pleasure in coming like this together to offer worship. It pleases me. One day will come a time that you will not be able to gather like this. The times that you're living is crucial. Be prayerful and trust in me. Let me lead us to say the closing prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for our dire friends. They are precious to you, for they are created in your image. You do not want any to perish, but to receive eternal life through faith in Jesus. You have left clear signs of your divinity and eternal power in creation. You do not want men to exchange your glory for other gods or things that look like humans or things. We pray that you will lift the spiritual blindness in the dire people. Remove the spiritual deafness and hard-heartedness. Let them understand that you are the only true and living God who can give us the true and abundant life. Let there be true repentance. Let them be a holy nation and a royal priesthood who will declare your praises. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.